Hi, welcome to module 9, which is the third of the three modules on algebra review. Um, this one would deal with a sort of grab bag of different ways of simplifying equations, including inequalities, and also at the very end, as a bonus, I'll derive um, the quadratic equation from last module using completing the square. Okay. But first, let's deal with some um, a little simpler stuff. Fractions, even though you've seen them all before, um, tend to be a source of significant error when people do algebra, mostly because they do too fast. Um, a fraction, is, again, is the ratio. So let's use numbers first for arithmetic. Arithmetic is generally dealing with numbers, manipulating numbers. Algebra is manipulating expressions, variables. So 3 over 2 is a fraction. Um, 5 and a half is a fraction. Manipulating these fractions tends to lead to errors. Um, so let's say I wanted to make five and a half into a single expression. Well, five is the same thing as 10 halves because 10 over two is 10 divided by two, which is five. So I have 10 halves and another half equals 11 halves. The point of doing that was to note that you can always add fractions as long as the denominator is the same. Remember the denominator is the thing in the bottom, and the numerator is the thing in the top. If the denominators are the same, you can add them. If they're not the same, you can't add them. So, 1 over a plus 1 over b does not equal 1 over a plus b. However, um, a over c plus b over c does equal a plus b over c. So the biggest error people tend to make is just adding fractions without paying attention to the fact that the denominators must be the same in all cases to add them. Um, when you're manipulating them, you can do whatever you want as long as you do the same thing at the top and the bottom and it's multiplicative or div dividing, but multiplicative covers both. So for instance, if I have 3 over 6, I can divide top and bottom by 3 or equivalently multiply top and bottom by a third to get one third times three on top and one third times six on bottom, which equals one over two or one half. I can do whatever I want as long as I multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. Because if I multiply by the same number, I'm effectively multiplying by one. And that's okay. That's the identity. So a common trick to use to simplify equations is to multiply or add the identity. I can always add zero and I can always multiply by one. And I can split those zeros and ones up. So, since I can always add zero, I can also always add seven and subtract seven at the same time. That's fine because seven minus seven is zero. Similarly, since I can always multiply by one, I can always multiply by three and multiply by a third at the same time. Because three times a third is one. Or I can multiply by one third over one third because that's one. I can multiply by anything that makes one and divide and, and subtract and add anything that equals zero. That's usually helpful in simplifying that trick. And you'll see when you do more examples yourself. Um, just remember, Always keep track of what you're multiplying. It has to be the same top and bottom. Don't add fractions that have different denominators. And never divide by zero. Zero over zero is not something you can do. It's undefined. You can't multiply top and bottom by zero. You can add zero to top and bottom. I'm sorry, you can't add zero to top and bottom. You can add zero to both sides of an equation, but you can't multiply by zero on top and bottom. Why can't you add the same thing to both sides of to top and bottom? Well, let's try. One half plus one plus one equals two thirds. Clearly two thirds is not the same as a half. So you can't do that. Um, and again, you can use it a lot. If you have two thirds plus four sevenths, you wanna add them. You can only add them if the denominators are the same. How do you get them to the same? Well, you can do. You can try to find the um, lowest common, um, well, in this case, not the factor. In this case, you can multiply three times seven. This is 14 over 21, because you can multiply top and bottom by 7. And this is 12 over 21, because you can multiply top and bottom by 3. That makes 
26 over 21. So again, you can multiply top and bottom by the same thing, just the same way you can add and subtract the same number to each equation. And you can add things to the same denominator. That helps you simplify stuff. Um, inequalities. Inequalities can be treated almost the exact same as equalities. So um, if I have x plus 1 is greater than 3, that's an inequality. I can still add and subtract the same number from both sides the same way I could for equalities. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get x plus 1 minus 1 is greater than 3 minus 1, or x is greater than 2. That's fine. I can also multiply divide the same number on each side most of the time, as long as the number is positive. So if I have um, 1 third x is greater than 2y, I can multiply each side by 3. Sorry, no equal there. Ignore that. That's 3 times 1 third is 1. So I have x is greater than 3 times 2, which is 6y. That's all fine. The one thing I must be careful about are signs. And signs, like fractions, are a point of common error in doing algebra. You must keep track of your signs at all times. We already talked about the rules for that. A negative times a negative is a positive. Two positives together are a positive. A negative times a positive or a positive times a negative are negative, is negative. Um, keep track of those because sign errors can propagate through entire algebra and make a mess of everything. And in particular for inequalities, they have a, they have a, a tricky thing to remember. Let's try that again, um, but let's try negative one third x is greater than two. What's x? Now, we could still multiply both sides by negative three, but what happens then? If I didn't do anything to this. So negative three times two is negative six. This would be x is greater than negative six. But that's wrong. Right, so let's see. What if we put, pick a number that's greater than negative six in here, like negative five, or say negative three? Well, negative three is greater than negative six. If I plug a negative three here, I get negative three times negative one third, which is one. But one's not greater than two. So if this is true, this is not true. That's a problem. So what you must do is whenever you multiply by a negative number on both sides of an inequality, you must flip the inequality. So instead of being greater than, this should be less than, and this should be less than. Pick a number less than negative 6, say negative 9. Negative 9, so if we do this over here, negative 9 times negative a third is 3, and 3 is bigger than 2, so now we're okay. And um, the reason is, if you have a number line like this, there's 0, here's the negative numbers, here's the positive numbers. If you're looking for greater than over here, and you multiply by a negative number, you flip the entire thing, and now you want things that are smaller than the negative number, and vice versa. So you must flip the sign. Greater over here, less than over here. So as long as you remember to always flip the sign of the inequality, flip the direction of the inequality, when multiplying by a negative number, you'll be fine. But that's a common error when you're dealing with inequalities, is to forget to flip the inequality because you're not sure if something's negative, and that leads to errors and you get the wrong direction for inequality, which has substantial substantive problems, right? Saying this works as long as the GDP is less than a number is much different than saying this works as long as the GDP is greater than a number. That's a common, that's a, that's a big difference, obviously, and it can come from missing a negative sign. Okay. That's really it for, for this stuff. Um, the one thing I did say I would, I, would, I would talk about a little bit is um, completing the square. So let me just do that really fast. Um, let's take a most general equation quadratic equation. And here b and a and c can be negative or positive. Now I want to figure out how to 
factor this. Well, this is tricky. It's not obvious how to factor that. We can do that is by sort of forcing the issue. So let's try that. Um, first, let's divide by a. Assume a is not 0. So to divide all the terms by a. 0 divided by a is still 0. So we have x squared plus b over a plus c over a equals 0. OK? Now we have x by itself. Now I want to factor. Well, how do we do that? Let's see. x. Um, now, if we take this thing and divide it by 2, what do we get? Let's just try that for a second. We get x squared plus this times this once. Um, OK, let's multiply it out. I'll show you again. So what do we get? We get x times x. That's the first. It's x squared. Then we have the outer. So x times b over 2a. So that's b over 2a times x. Now the inner, these two. Same thing, plus the last, b squared over 4a squared. Okay. Now, this plus this equals x squared plus b over a, because you have 1 half times b over a, x, plus 1 half times b over ax, added together makes b over ax plus this extra term we don't want. Now, how does that work? Well, we see over here, these first two terms are just the first two terms over here. So let's replace those with that. So now we have x plus b over 2a squared. Okay. And that actually has one extra term we don't want. That has this b squared um, minus 4a term. So let's subtract the same thing. And this is what I meant earlier, but you can always add and subtract the same number. So stick, take a step back. Let me add that again. That's the outcome. But why is that good or bad? Well, let's check this out for a second. Well, um, this thing is that let's add that term and subtract that term. These two terms together add to 0. So I'm effectively adding 0. That's fine. We're allowed to add 0 to both sides. There's no problem there. You can always add 0 to even one side. Adding 0 changes nothing because the identity, the additive identity. But if we take this half of the 0 and stick it together with these terms, you get this term up here. And then that leaves you this half of the 0 left over. So by taking 0 and splitting it up into two pieces, we effectively enable us to have a squared term. Okay, So now we have this thing up here. Now let's move everything that has no x in it to the other side of the equation. We can do that by adding the additive inverse to both sides. The additive inverse is b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Add this to here, you cancel. Add this to here, and you cancel both of those. Add this to the other side, and you get this term. So you get this. OK. Now, so, so far, let's keep that so far. Now, let's take the square root of this thing on both sides. OK, so now we have x plus b over 2a equals, now it's plus or minus because the square root could be either plus or minus, remember, plus or minus the square root of this thing. OK? So, so far so good. Now, start again. Subtract b minus 2a from both sides. You get x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of, of I should have written this down, um, of c over a and b 
b squared over 4a squared minus this. Okay? Now, we're almost there, actually. Let's consider this part in here. If we multiply times 1, we can do that. If we multiply the whole thing by 1, that's fine. But this time, let's call 1 2a over 2a. That's 1, right? 2a divided by 2a. a is not 0, so we're okay. Multiply this times this. But let's be a little even more fancy and say we have plus or minus here. So let's multiply plus or minus 1. Let's turn plus or minus 1 into this. Because the square root of 4a squared is plus or minus 2a. So now we have this term. I'm not sure about the sign, but we have this term right here. Now, this brings us to, to an important point. How do you combine ex, how do you combine square roots or um, exponents in general? We'll deal with this much more when we do functions of exponents shortly. But um, you know, ahead of the game here, as long as they're both the same power, you can multiply them together. So we get the square root of 4a squared times the square root of b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. You can distribute that because the square root covers both, as long as the same power, as we'll learn shortly, to get 4a squared times b squared over 4a squared. These two cancel, because then top and the bottom, minus c over a times 4a squared, which equals the square root of b squared minus 4. Only one a stays around, because it's a squared divided by a gives you a, a c. So that's b squared over 4ac. Remember, there's, that uses the top of this. The bottom is still there. And now the first term and the second term both are divided by 2a. And that produces the quadratic equation. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So you can complete the square by using this technique to rederive the quadratic equation. The same technique, if b, a, and c are numbers, gets you the answer directly without having to go through remembering the equation. So completing the square technique is identical to using the quadratic equation. It might be easier sometimes when you have numbers. It might be harder if our numbers are complicated. Um, I personally prefer to just remember this equation because we've been, I've been doing this for you know years now and it's memorable. <laughs> Um, but if it's not memorable, completing the square gets you the answer. And that is it. And the biggest thing to remember for algebra, be careful. Keep track of all your steps. Do the same thing to each side. That works in every case except for inequalities when you multiply by a negative number, in which case you must flip the inequality. Keep track of your signs. Don't add fractions improperly. Don't multiply um, um, square roots improperly. You can never add square roots. So that is not equal to this. Basically, don't do anything that you don't know you can do, and just be very careful, and you'll be fine. Thanks, and the very last module of this video, lecture one, is on proofs. Thanks a lot.